cautiously optimistic would be how I would phrase the state I'm in right now. I, I've been really pleased with uh, the way we've shared the basketball. I've been really pleased with the balance of the numbers in the first two exhibition games and then in our, our first regular season game. I like our intensity. I like our energy. Um, the air feels good in the gym, but it's early. So we've, we've got a long way to go, and we've got to see how we react to adversity and uh, uh, how our bench continues to produce. And, uh, uh, but I, I, I think from all early indications, we have a chance for this to be an extraordinary season. I know it's early, but you're number two in the country. <laughs> Understand how that happened, okay? Um, we've won one game, and some folks ahead of us got beat. So that's how that happened. We're, we're not looking a gift horse in the mouth. We appreciate it. It's an, it's an awesome honor to uh, be ranked number two in the country, particularly in view of uh, the parity that exists across this country right now. But at the same time, we have to earn it. And uh, um, we, we've got our work cut out for us in the week ahead with our, our game, obviously, on Wednesday night. And then if we're fortunate enough to do well and, and continue in the tournament Friday and Sunday, uh, we'll know a whole lot more at the first of next week about what we truly are and where we belong. The opener, it, you guys were very good. Is it, is, it a, is it just a starting point, or did you guys uh, walk out in midseason form? By some accident no, future. no, it's a starting point, definitely. There are lots of things that we can do better. We had uh, moments of brilliance and then uh, lots of spans of mediocrity. Uh, the great thing was that we didn't really have any swoons where we were just horrendous or where we didn't look like we knew what we were doing, which is typical sometimes in early season where everybody's on a different page. We really didn't have any of those periods of play in the first game, which is what I think makes everybody feel um, that maybe we're ahead of schedule in some form. Well, is this a team that uh, that you can put a finger on a reason why you won't have you know, a horrible 10 minutes and a half for, you know, those swoons? For I don't know that you can predict that, but if there's a reason that prevents it, it would probably be our experience having three seniors and then having a core of juniors and then having a point guard who has a year of Division One basketball under her belt. I think all of those factors bode well for that. Point guard's always a leader of the team. Danielle's just a sophomore. Talk about her growth as opposed to a year ago. She doesn't even seem like a sophomore to me. She just uh, is a kid who's a sponge. She's hungry to learn more about the game. She wants to watch film. She wants to do the little things right. <laughs> Uh, it's not just the plays that everybody notices that, that she takes attention to. It's the little things, you know, did I get us in the right spot? Is our spacing good? Um, she's just very, very attentive and understands the responsibility that's associated with that position on the floor and doesn't just accept it, she embraces it. And I think that gives her a chance to be really special. Ashley Paris looks like she's... A million bucks. <laughs> She looks great, and she's playing well, leading the break, running in transition, uh, able to defend uh, perimeter players now. Just uh, changed her whole confidence level in the way in the way she carries herself on the basketball court. But she really she morphed really into a power forward before she was kind of a center. But she's now definitely a, or even a three player. Yeah, she can come out, and we can play four round one with her being one of the four now. And uh, part of that is due to her improved fitness level, but part of it's also due to the time she spent working on her face-up game in the offseason. And not that it was bad before, but she didn't have the faith in it that she has now that was honed based on hours in the gym. So talk about the unity of Oklahoma basketball. You're at the men's games. Coach Capel comes to your games. You, your players are at the men's games. Blake and Kate are at your games. Yeah, it's been really, really fun, and I'm so glad you gave me a chance to talk about men's basketball because there's a really big game tonight. We're all very excited about that. I know you guys are as we too with uh, the caliber of talent that will be on the floor. But there's a special camaraderie, I think, or there can be between men's and women's basketball teams. You share a home. You share a facility. Uh, you go through a very similar schedule. Um, uh, Everything that you face, unlike any other sport on campus, you know, softball and baseball is similar, but their seasons don't coincide and they don't share the same field. And uh, we're, it, it's really a unique situation. And I feel so fortunate uh, that Jeff Capel is our men's basketball coach. Um, the camaraderie there, the things I've learned from him, uh, his interest that he takes in our in our team. Uh, we talk every night after uh, our respective teams play. And what do you think about this? And what do you think about that? And it's just, it's a tremendous opportunity of professional growth aside from the personal friendship. Who's the best freshman basketball player on campus, Whitney Hand or Willie Moore? Ooh, that's tough. That's tough. Um, they're both pretty darn good. <laughs> uh, both very special, and I think both kids that will leave their mark 
on this university and on their respective programs. Did you expect Whitney to have the impact that she would have so early? Yes. Yes. Whitney is one of those individuals that, you know, it's about the fact that she can make threes, and yes, she can, and her, her shooting form is pure, and that was a lovely photo. Whoever had it in the paper of that straight elbow, it was beautiful. She does a lot of things right. She attacks the rim. She has a great sense of being on the basketball floor. But what she brings with her is a presence, a, a, a sense of confidence of who she is and what she stands for, what she believes in, and that affects and permeates through every aspect of her life, whether she's in the classroom or on the basketball court or interacting with her teammates. And maybe the best thing she's given us is that uh, sense of self-discipline. I walked down the stairs for practice yesterday about an hour and 15 minutes before we were scheduled to begin, and she was shooting on the gun got out of class and came straight over and, and got shots up. And that's what great young players do. And, and um, then when you're able to perform the way she does, that just adds a punch to it. Danielle, I guess, is basically playing the same position this year that she played last year, which is point guard. But I'll bet she walks in with a, an entirely different idea of you know, what she needs to do today to help this team play well or whatever, because she's not taking it all in on the run. Can you explain the difference when you're the next where she is? Well, when you're a freshman, everything's foggy. It's as though your world is spinning and, and you have on glasses that aren't the right prescription. Everything that used to be so familiar as a high school player and even as a junior high player suddenly looks all messed up because of the pace of the game, because of the things that we present to them that they have to think about while they move and play. And for most high school kids, uh, the majority of their time is spent with the basketball in their hand. If they're the best player on their team, they have the ball in their hand all the time. Then you come to a college program, and now the, most, the majority of your time is spent without the ball in your hand. So what do you do then? And so that's, a, that's an adjustment for kids. And then for the point position as well, it, it's uh, uh, just made even more complex by the fact that you're responsible for everybody else on the floor too in a way that you never have been before. And uh, the, the first step in being able to take care of everybody else is being able to feel good about you and your role and what you do. And I think that's where Danielle's emerging leadership comes from. She feels very comfortable in what she's supposed to do and the gifts that she brings to our team and uh, the role that she's supposed to play. And that enables her then to lead the people around her. Um, would, would this be something that last season she was worried about what she was going to do. Now she's almost in a position to worry about what everybody around her is going to do. Are they going to be in the right positions? So yeah, I think that's a natural progression. Uh, it's kind of like quieting your mind so that your body can, can uh, take advantage of all the reps that you've put it through. Um, she's in that position now where she knows what she can do, and she's conscientious of making sure everybody else is doing their job. Talk about your new grad assistant, Kendra I sure can. You may say good things or bad things. You can do both. <laughs> She's terrific. Uh, we wrote on the board when we hired Kendra, better late than never, uh, recruited the heck out of that kid when she was coming out of high school, and, and she just couldn't leave her family and friends and, and the opportunity that she had there in Manhattan, and we understand that. She had a great career. We never could guard her while she was in that purple uniform, but uh, she's already brought a, a little something that you don't even know was missing until you get it, just that edge of having been a, a competitive college player not very long ago and then having participated in the WNBA as recently as this past summer. Um, uh, and just an energy level and a new mindset, fresh eyes. If, if nothing else, just fresh eyes can sometimes be so beneficial, and she's much more than that. Plus, she's just a great kid. Great to go into the office and see her every day. Makes our job good. Sherry, you had some shots go down in that opener. How pleasing was that to see, and was that important at all for, for you guys to get off to a good shooting start? Yeah, I think it was. I, I think it started in the first exhibition game, and, and the basket just sort of relaxed and went, ah. Oh. And uh, with every shot that went in, it, the basket seemed to get larger. And, and sometimes that way, and John, you followed us closely enough last year, you heard me say a million times, missing shots can be contagious. Well, so can making them. And uh, I think there's some... Um, alleviation of pressure from our, our shooters from last year with the addition of Whitney. Whether or not she makes a million threes becomes irrelevant. They expect her to, and that's the piece that's important.